Now, not everything about agriculture is all cupcakes and kittens and sunshine and cheesecake. Um, there are definitely some downsides to ag. Um, the first and most obvious and most important is the crushing environmental impact of, of farming and of domestication. Um, what we do to the land is, you know, obviously, you know, pretty, pretty important. Um, huge amounts of land are cleared to create open fields in which we can plant and tend crops. Um, we also erect structures to control and contain our crops and we divide up the land. These are my crops. Those are your crops. Again, here we come with the social inequality. Um, also, as we start to specialize our labor and industries begin popping up, well, those people need places to work. So larger and larger buildings become necessary. Um, storage areas for surplus food and surplus goods become necessary. Um, so again, the environment is once again impacted because now we are building bigger and more structures on it. Um, water resources are hugely impact because not only do I mean, obviously water is necessary for agriculture, um, but not everybody gets to build directly along the side of the river. So we have to find ways to re-divert that water. So areas that previously might not have seen large amounts of water, now thanks to irrigation, ditches, canals, we bring water to areas where it previously hadn't been. Um, the impact on animal species is massive as well. Again, like I said in part one, um, we use our technology to exterminate, to eradicate unwanted species, things that are a threat to our food surplus or the domesticated animals that we treasure so much. Um, the domestication of the cat specifically is a perfect example of this. The cat is not a labor animal. The cat is not an animal that provides a large amount of meat. So why domesticate it? Simple. It eats mice. Mice eat our stored food surplus. So domesticating the cat comes much later after agriculture has been developed, but it's an incredibly important animal for us to domesticate because it helps to protect our food sources, our stored surplus food. So as we begin to domesticate these certain animals and we begin to breed them and we begin to breed a lot of them, they begin to take over the niches in the food chain and in the surrounding environment that were initially filled by other animals. You know, if you domesticate and breed a ton of cats, that's going to have a significant negative impact on the mice and the rat population in that area. And the same is true for other animals. Um, pigs, for example, pigs are an incredibly invasive species. When they enter a new environment, especially domesticated ones, they eat any and everything and localized land species suffer at the hands of pigs. So the environmental impact of ag is, I mean, it's unbelievable. Um, socially, the, in the impact of agriculture is mainly that hunter-gatherer society is either diminished, it's scattered to less favorable land, or it's just flat out absorbed into our new agricultural way of life. Um, one of the other downsides of this is you start to see the beginnings of slavery. Um, as ag societies push hunter-gatherer societies out of the way, uh, they often come into conflict. And that conflict sometimes will lead to war between the societies, usually with the agricultural society winning out. Their accumulated wealth and their accumulated population is more than these hunter-gatherers can handle. And the prisoners of these war, especially the females, because again, procreation is still a really big deal, um, they become the first slaves. Um, this is the first time you see human bondage. 
especially in agricultural societies, because again, farming's a lot of work. Um, and it's easier if you've got someone else to do it for you. Uh, let's see, what else? So another big downside of ag is that thanks to domestication, we now live very, very closely with our animals. And those animals have different immune systems than we do. And their immune systems have evolved differently than ours have. And so because of this, animals start to introduce pandemic disease into our population. Um, you know, we are living closer and breathing the same air and passing around germs with these animals that we're working with side by side. And different strains of influenza and different strains of different viruses that they had adapted to over millions and millions of years of evolution, we have not yet had the chance to adapt to. And once these diseases um, mutate and turn into things that we can you know, get into our bloodstream, um, they become pretty widespread and a lot of people die. When we get to the Black Death, um, we'll talk about how rats from Asia basically wiped out half of Europe. Um, now, another downside of ag is a less diverse diet. Um, agriculture is most intense and it's most efficient when you're growing all of the same thing, right? because you are using all of the same techniques, you are using all of the same methods, you are irrigating in the same way. So farming works best when you're growing huge batches of stuff. But when you grow huge batches of stuff, whether it's wheat or it's barley or it's peas or corn or soybeans, um, that tends to dominate one's diet. And as that begins to dominate one's diet, we eat less and less of the other things that we did when we were foragers, um, other wild plants, other wild nuts, other wild animals. And so that lack of diversity in our diet tends to lead to cases of malnutrition um, and the things that come along with it, um, reduced bone growth. Um, Ag societies tend to be less physically fit than hunter-gatherer societies. Um, our bodies tend to be smaller than theirs. And a lot of that has to do <clears throat> with that less diverse diet. Um, one of the other downsides of ag is that a lot of the time, you still have to supplement it with some kind of foraging, um, especially in the months right before harvest food takes time to grow and it takes time to be processed and you still got to eat during those times and if the previous year's harvest didn't turn out as well or you know you had to you know feed your animals or there was a raid and some of your food was stolen or an accident you know there's a fire or something burns um Agricultural societies, especially early on, are really, really, really vulnerable to famine, to food shortages. Because again, this is several months of hard labor followed by months of downtime. So a lot of these early ag societies, I mean, they still have to supplement their intense labor with foraging on top of it. <clears throat> Um, some other problems with ag, shorter lifespan, more physical ailments, again, due to that intense round the clock labor for months at a time that comes along with agriculture. Um, socially, a huge move here, and we'll talk about it a lot more when we start talking about patriarchy in the next unit, is social equality starts to erode with agriculture, right? We begin to accumulate things. And as we begin to accumulate those things, certain people, whether it's because of luck or family position or talent or whatever the case may be, certain people begin to accumulate more of those valuable things. And this is the beginning of wealth. And with wealth comes social class. Um, some people have more than others. 
And those people who have more than others tend to be more powerful. Um, the most powerful among them usually get to be in charge. And you start to see chiefdoms and you begin to see, you know, religious leadership. And you begin to see early states like Mesopotamia and Egypt. So political equality begins to erode. Um, probably the biggest equality that erodes is gender equality, because now with agriculture, you start to have jobs that are not restricted, but they become culturally acceptable for one gender or the other. Um, women, because of the necessity, again, of childbirth and child raising, um, are generally relegated to jobs in the home, um, processing the harvested agriculture, um, these early industries like pottery and weaving, while the men who no longer have to be away for weeks at a time on hunt can now focus strictly on agriculture, on the daily growing and planting life. Um, so, this is the beginning of your uh, of your whole society of a woman's places in the home um that gender bias and that and those gender roles really start happening thanks to agriculture